this device, share the screen, share. This what? Okay, all right, very good. So I think I got it. Okay, let's go ahead and start the class today. Uh, we are going to talk about Congress. Uh, here are the learning objectives for uh, this uh, chapter, role of Congress. We will discuss that by cameral system. Powers granted to Congress, uh, delegated and implied powers. Then we will talk about division of labor in both houses, the Senate and the House. Explain uh, the role of uh, members of Congress as a trustee and uh, delegates. Then uh, we will talk about their election and gerrymandering and the related Supreme Court cases. And then uh, we will talk about uh, um, congressional committees, how a bill becomes a law, and then congressional leadership structure. Please pay attention to congressional leadership structure carefully because this is also essay question at the end of semester. So uh, how a bill becomes a law, congressional leadership is an essay question at the end. So uh, uh, pay special attention to uh, this topic uh, so you can do well in your essay questions. So let's go for Congress uh, or legislative branch. And uh, this is a very important uh, branch of the government. Article one of the constitution deals with Congress. The fact that it is the first and the longest article indicates how important the legislative branch must have seemed to founding fathers. And uh, the main function is to make laws, legislation, laws. In the United States, we have a bicameral system. At the Constitutional Convention in 1787, the founding fathers created two chambers, two chamber system. This was actually the compromise. We will discuss that in a minute. Two houses for three reasons. Historical. The British Parliament consisted of two houses since 1300. And so this was just kind of uh, imitations from their uh, parliamentary system. House of Lords and House of Commons in uh, England. And in the United States, we call it House of Representatives and the Senate. The second reason is practical. Bicameral legislature was necessary to compromise between Virginia plan and New Jersey plan during the Constitutional uh, Convention. The third reason is theoretical. The framers favored bicameral Congress in order that one house might act as a check on the other. So it's part of like checks and balance system, check on each other's power. So let's uh, cover this structure. The House of Representatives is based on population. The Senate is based on state equality. Congress has changed the numbers of the seats in House of Representatives as the nation has grown. Initially from 1789, we had 65 members. Then it increased to 106 from 19, I'm sorry, 1794 to 1800. Then increased to 142 from 1800 to 1810. 186 seats from 1811 to 1820. And since, uh, 1912 it has been 435 it has not changed there so over a century uh, the number in the house of representative is or has been 435 
members. Each state is guaranteed at least one representative. In addition, the House has resident commissioner from Puerto Rico, four delegates, one each from District of Columbia, Guam, Samoa, and the Virgin Island. These are just the delegates of uh, additional uh, members uh, to uh, be in the House of Representatives. The two House provides two different types of representation. Representatives in the House are elected every two years. They better reflect changes in public opinion. Larger states have more influence in the House because of the population. Members of the Senate are elected every six years. The Senate offers more slow and careful deliberation of laws based on national interest. All the states are represented equally in the Senate. So we have 100 members, two from each state, two multiplied by 50, that's 100. So uh, that's the basic structure of the House and the Senate. 435 in the House since 1912, and the Senate, two from each state. I found this table useful to compare two houses in terms of uh, power. House may initiate all the revenue bills and must pass all articles of impeachment. Senate has exclusive powers, gives an advice, consent on presidential nominations, must approve treaties, tries the impeachment officials, impeaching or impeached officials. Membership we already covered, term of office we already covered, two and six. Constituents are smaller for the House, the Senate is bigger. Power are uh, more centralized and stronger leadership in the House. In the Senate, because it's large, uh, districts are larger, so uh, less centralized, weaker leadership. Political prestige, House is less prestigious than Senator. Senators are more prestigious, more prestige for Senators. And, um, uh, some other differences that you can uh, read, uh, take a look at yourself. So uh, we will go and uh, go over these uh, topics and cover during uh, our future discussions. So let's talk about powers of Congress. The Constitution gives Congress two kinds of powers, delegated and implied powers delegated and implied powers. So let's look at these uh, two kinds of powers one by one. First, delegated powers. Examples, lay and collect taxes, declare war, raise an army and the navy, borrow coin money, punish for the counterfeiters, fix the standards of weight and measures, establish post offices and postal roads, issue copyrights and patents, regulate interstate commerce, create federal courts, establish for uh, rules of naturalization and we will cover that, uh, citizenship. Naturalization means 
citizenship. What about the implied powers? Let's look at some examples here. According to the Article 1, Section 8, which is called Elastic Clause, this is what it says. Congress has the power to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying out into execution the foregoing. Foregoing here means express powers. Whatever it takes, that's implied. Whatever it takes to carry out the delegated uh, powers. And we will give you, I will give you some examples. Here are the examples. Uh, delegated power of Congress is to raise and support armed forces. What does it mean? It implies that they can draft. So the Constitution doesn't say the government has the right to draft people. But it is implied from uh, Article 1, Section 8. Collect taxing, tax taxes, implies that Congress could use money to support. So they have to print money and uh, create banks and all the related activities to collect taxes and spend the money. Established naturalization rules, which implies Congress can limit the number of immigrants. So it's not unlimited. Uh, so uh, make rules and regulations that uh, under what circumstance a person can be a naturalized citizen of the United States. There are two ways to be a US citizen. One is by birth. Anybody is born in the United States is American no matter who your parents are. If you are born in the US soil, you are a US citizen. Some people are not born in the United States. They migrate here, like myself. So I'm a US citizen. How? I'm a naturalized citizen. So I went through a process and I became a naturalized citizen, the citizen of the United States. So there are two ways, to, by birth or by naturalization and many others do as well, millions of people. Here I have additional examples of the implied power and delegated or express power. Uh, I will not cover all of these since you have the slide. Uh, just a few examples. Uh, express power to borrow money. What does it imply? It implies that to establish Federal Reserve System of Banks. So uh, there's a Federal Reserve Bank that controls the interest rate and uh, regulates money borrowing. Uh, that's the implications. Uh, let's look at another example here. Uh, raise and uh, army and the Navy implies that uh, government can draft Americans into military. Another example, a naturalization, regulate the, uh, you know, limit immigration. Uh, and uh, post office, you know, the implies that to prohibit mail fraud and uh, prevent shipping of certain items through mail, stuff like that. So. Uh, from each delegated power, there are there could be some uh, implied powers. What if there is a dispute over this? Well, it goes to the Supreme Court. Like we discussed the uh, case of McCullough versus Maryland. Do you remember that uh, Maryland tried to tax federal government and the federal government refused to pay the taxes and went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said that state cannot tax federal government and it's their power to create bank and uh, it is implied so uh, we already covered that let's also talk about exclusive powers of the house there are certain powers exclusively belongs to the house certain powers exclusively belongs to the senate examples the house can bring charges of impeachment 
which we witnessed, if you watched the TV recently, last year or so, uh, through impeachment process uh, for Donald Trump. So House brought the charges. Elect the president if there is no majority in electoral college. In order to win electoral college, you have to have 270 votes. What if you don't get 270 votes? Then the House elects the president. We will cover that later on the presidency. Elect its own officers. Judge the qualifications and discipline its members. Expel or censor member of the House. Again, this is not the whole list. These are just some examples of exclusive powers of the House of Representatives. Very well. Any questions so far? No? All right. It's not censorship. Oh, uh, censor, no, that's not censorship. Censoring means punishing them. Uh, if they uh, uh, um, do something wrong, yeah, they just kind of censor them that, you know, or kind of advise them not to do it again uh -huh. or expel them. Exclusive powers of Senate. Examples? If you watched again impeachment, the Senate was a jury trial for impeachment. House bring charges, the Senate sits as a jury trial. Elect vice president if there is no majority in the electoral college. We will cover this in detail later on the presidency. Ratify treaties and the presidential appointees, exclusive power of the Senate. Elect its own officers and judge the qualifications and discipline its members like House does. So each house can discipline their members. Very well. Uh, Powers of Congress is not limited to making laws, legislation. There are several other functions for uh, Congress. Let's see what those are. Executive function. This is part of checks and balance. They share the power with the uh, Congress shares the power with president. President make treaties with other nations, but uh, Congress has to approve it. Congress must declare war. President cannot. Prepare budget, federal budget. Congress prepares and submits to the president. So these are the shared function, exec executive function with the president. Judicial function. Congress has the power to impeach officials. That's a judicial function. And it requires, conviction requires two thirds of the vote, not the simple majority. Simple majority is 50 plus one. Two thirds is uh, more than that. It's about uh, 60, um, three, four numbers, something like that. Electoral function. When necessary, election disputes are settled by the legislature. We already told you, I already told you that in electoral college, if no president gets 270 votes, then the house uh, elects the president. So that's the electoral function. The Senate elects the vice president. Again, these are all related to electoral college. We will cover this under presidency. Constitutional function. Congress has the power to change or amend the US Constitution. We have already covered this. If you remember, 
there are two methods of uh, proposals, two methods of approval of uh, amendment uh, for the U.S. Constitution. So uh, we covered this under chapter uh, related to the Constitution. Congressional oversight function. Congress has the power to review actions of executive branch. So uh, they have power to audit. That's the reason they call members of certain departments uh, to come and testify, audit their actions. So uh, Congress may also request federal agencies, their director or any members to come and testify before Congress. Question. Congressional oversight is used to ensure that bureaucracy is enforcing and interpreting the laws the way Congress intended. So they want to check on them, see what's going on. How do they apply immigration laws? How does FBI acting? How does, uh, you know, other agencies? So they can question them and audit them and uh, oversight function. Let's talk about election uh, or electing members of Congress. Uh, formal qualifications for representatives, the House, one must be at least 25 years of age, citizen of US for seven years, and inhabitant of the state from which they are elected. Very simple, straightforward qualifications. But it requires more than that, which is informal. We will talk about that later. What about senators? Senators must be at least 30 years old, citizen of US for nine years, inhabitant of the state from which they are elected. Inhabitant means resident. They should be resident. They have to have a house, residence in that state. This is the point, uh, Angel, you mentioned, uh, you referred to earlier, I believe. No members of Congress may hold any other office. So they have to really full-time uh, members uh, focus on their job. No members of Congress may have engaged in an act of rebellion against the U.S. It's a big issue. Last January, there was an attack to uh, Congress, and some members participated. Now the still debate goes on that uh, they should be expelled from Congress. Congressional elections are operated by individual state government. Federal government does not operate the elections for presidency or members of Congress, states do. Members of the House, congressional elections are held on a Tuesday following the first Monday in the November of each even numbered years. So this year, 2022 is an even numbered year. So in November, we are going to have election for members of the House. They're elected every two years by popular vote. All seats are up for election at the same time. So all 435 of them are elected at the same time. But the Senate is not like that. Senate is one third. We will talk about that in a minute. The number of seats awarded to each state is to be determined by the result of decennial census. Decennial means what? Anyone knows? Ten. Very good. Every ten years. Every ten years. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Decennial means every ten years. Very good. Each state has at least one representative. Each state has at least one representative, regardless of population. To continue the congressional election, 
each representative is elected from one house district. I will show you the map in a minute. This takes us to the subject of redistricting. Redistricting is the way house districts are redrawn after the census based on the reapportionment. The state legislature draws the district lines. I'm going to give you some maps and explain all these in detail in a minute. Yes, yes, we will discuss the gerrymander. To uh, kind of get your common knowledge here, uh, based on 2020 census, Texas has how many congressional seats in DC? Uh, 26, 38, 45, or 30? 45, is that your final answer? Yeah. All right, we have the first loser today, Angel, yes. Okay, Martinez, what is your guess? Excellent, another loser. So I give you another chance. Angel, try another one. 38. 38 is correct answer, very good, yeah. Yeah, Texas. That's right. Yeah. All right. Yes, California. Ah, California is fifty something. Yeah, we will look at it in a minute. Very good. Uh, senators have been elected by popular vote. This is a test question. Remember, this is a one of multiple choice test questions. Amendment number up to 1913, it was state that elected the senators. But uh, since uh, 17th Amendment is a popular vote. So it has changed. 17th Amendment, uh, senators are elected by popular vote. Every six years, one third. Every two years. So there's a rotation, you know. Not all of them will change at the same time. In the House, they do, but not here. Every state has two senators. We already know, and you already know that. Let's talk about uh, drawing congressional districts. This is a little bit complicated topic. So uh, we will go to some details of it. Reapportionment refers to the process of adjusting the numbers of the House members given to each state, which happens every 10 years. As Angel mentioned, decennial, every 10 years. Decennial means every 10 years. Redistricting or drawing the new district boundaries must happen every time a state gains or loses seats and is necessary to make sure that the population in each district remains equal. There's a principle is called one person, one vote principle. So to keep that balance, Every 10 years, this has to be done. So let's look at some of the details. This is a quotation that I liked it, I included here, that we are in the business of rigging elections. So redistricting is a very complicated topic. So uh, it's actually coming from a former state senator uh, uh, that, uh, made this uh, quotation. In 1790, there were 105 members of the House, and each district contained about 33,000 people. Check out today, 435, and each district has about 766,987. It's just approximate number. That's approximate number. So you can see how 
the numbers from three thirty three thousand is changed to seven seven hundred sixty six thousand nine hundred eighty seven members so uh, a correction has to be made here i think this what is this 300 this is not correct here yeah that was not correct so we corrected that um so states control the drawing of district boundaries state controls the district boundaries district boundaries have strong influence on who gets elected to congress altering district lines for political gain is called gerrymandering angel this is what you were talking about altering the district lines for political gain is called gerrymandering states also have drawn districts that discriminates against minorities which today is supposedly illegal So many like things for language minority turn to translate to the white people in the community because it knows it like fair explanation. Yes, yes. I will show you the map exactly what you are talking about. Yes. Just bear, bear with me. All right. The next slide we will cover. Gerrymandering goes back a long way before computer technology has made it far more uh, destructive because computer really technology helps to uh, manipulate the lines the districts can be created with surgical procedures taking into account not just party registration but also voting history and the line drawers and uh, have become adapted to drawing districts to exclude homes of uh, rival candidates. So this is an issue, big, a big problem. As Angel mentioned, let's uh, look at some, uh, I mean, the historical example, this is a picture that from 1812, this was the shape of a district. Uh, of course, this is a cartoon, they put a wing and uh, head for it, but, uh, uh, goes back to uh, uh, governor or uh, governor of Massachusetts was uh, Elbridge Jerry and uh, that Jerry Mandarin comes from his last name uh, because uh, he did it you know first time or discovered then so uh, it was 1812 over 200 years ago this is another cartoon today Jerry Mandarin after dinner meant uh, Supreme Court and the democracy because the case goes to the Supreme Court when there's a dispute and whatever Supreme Court decides that is going to have an impact for our democracy if they accept gerrymandering that means democracy is not good so uh, this cartoon refers to the fact that how Supreme Court can make or break democracy in the United States so uh, i find this pie chart very useful uh, that uh, go through the process of six uh, you know like a pie chart uh, that what happens in uh, redistricting article one section two of the con constitution mandates census every 10 years okay we got that out of the way the census is counting the population Recently, I don't know if you listened to the news, there were all sorts of mistakes on census. So uh, if I remember correctly, they said like 20 million people were not counted in the recent census. 20 million, that's a lot of numbers. So uh, that could be a big problem. Uh, 
Supposedly, we accept that census number then comes apportionment. Is the process of dividing 435 seats in the House among 50 states. Reapportionment is reallocating. Yes, sir. No, no problem. Reallocating the seats between, you know, uh, members. And then number five, once the state population is determined, each state redraw those lines. And that's where the gerrymandering, the process of redrawing districts occurs. So that goes the whole gamut of gerrymandering, the apportionment. There are different ways to do it. When majority party draws the li district lines to maximize the power of their own party, it could be racial, it could be partisan. Partisan is party does, majority party does. Racial, the race, whatever the race, it could be, you know, when the districts are drawn uh, to either minimize or maximize the power of minority votes. Because technology enables state legislature to know what kind of people lives in each district. Hispanic, uh, Blacks, whites, whatever. There are two techniques, cracking and packing. We will talk about this. Cracking is spreading like minded voters apart across multiple districts to dilute their vote power in each district. Then comes packing. Concentrating like-minded voters together in one district to reduce their voting power in other districts. Cracking and packing. Let's look at some pictures here. This is the graphic description of the, how you can destroy, how you can combine them and make one district. To crack them, split it, same population, but see how you can split them and ruin their power, or combine them and give them a power. It makes a huge difference. Cracking and packing. This is the result of census 2010, not 2020. I just included to give you the comparison. Angel, remember you said California in 2010, it had 53. See, it's the biggest population. This was about 10 years, 12 years ago. But this, these numbers are not valid anymore. So 12 years ago, uh, it shows which states gained with their bluish color. Green means no changes. Pink, this is a really good map because you see which states gained populations, which states lost population, which states nothing happened. So what's going on here? People from north is migrating to where? To the south, to California, to Texas, to Arizona. This is what it means. All right. But results of 2020, take a look at it. Gained. Still, Texas and Florida is gaining population. People are migrating from where? 
Now we are getting what? People from California even. Yeah, makes. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. Also, you know, a lot of people are migrating, and Tyler is growing uh, very uh, fast. Uh, and uh, so uh, the rent, the residential stuff here, yeah, going up. Yeah, it is. It is uh, a problem. But if you look at the whole United States, you see from the north, the eastern states, um, Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New York, uh, Michigan, people are moving to, uh, they're losing. They're the losing population, cold area, coming to Texas, um, Florida, warmer weather, housing. There are different variables, you know, gaining. So, uh, I also find this map useful because it shows the breakdown of Texas population that we have 40% white and 40%, it's 39% Hispanic. Amazing, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how you classify, too. Yeah. yeah it's like, without a race, we're an ethnicity. I mean, I, I would be considered white, but I'm also considered not white. It's not. This is the weirdest thing. Yeah. It's also weirdest having a mother that's not white. That's, that's, that's uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point that how you classify people. But this is one way to do it, uh, one way the <coughs> results. 12% is black and five others, like Indians and others. So look at the congressional uh, representation. It's not the same proportion. So you can see the white people still is dominant in uh, Congress, in state house, and state senate. There may be a lot of states that are elected officials, even similar to a population. Mm. There's no law, it's just, you know, yeah. it's just. But this map also shows congressional district, uh, the colorful 38. Remember that question I asked you a few minutes ago? So uh, I like the color of this, yellow ones that are losing, green ones are gaining. And uh, California from 53, they're up to what, 52. Texas from 36, got to 38. So, um, this is the way um, uh, states, you know, uh, gain and lose uh, 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 members of Congress, you know. And this is an example of uh, congressional districts. Uh, if, let's say, we have 38, so Texas will be divided to 38, depending on the population concentration. So each color of these things you see here represents one. So geography and the population here are different. So if you look at it in certain areas, the area is larger, but the concentration is like look at Austin, Dallas, Houston. Geography is very small, but population is big. So if you look at the West Texas, Western part of the state, the geography is much bigger. And Angel, this is the last topic I will cover because we are out of time. Again, recently, again, um, Republicans did kind of uh, gerrymandering. Looks like the, you know that gerrymandering map to uh, 1812 map. So it was challenged in the Supreme Court. So let's stop here uh, on gerrymandering and the democracy because we are out of time. And um, then uh, we will continue our discussions on Thursday.